Okay, fine. Thanks. All right, guys, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, well, today, uh, it's nothing much today. I'll, I'll, I'll really keep time in terms of my speaking. And then now we do the questions and then I'll make sure that we are done by, by two. I hope that's okay with everyone. Cool. Um, that's okay. That's perfect. Okay. So, uh, uh, well, uh, again, just in my way of doing things, I just want to, uh, yesterday we, we spoke mainly about the, the audience, your audience and what they want, and then what you also want to achieve with your audience and how you want to put your material out. Uh, well, uh, this afternoon, I just want to talk about getting the right people to support your craft are you getting and uh, i'm talking about the team that is going to support you and then we're also going to talk about uh, i think we touched about this yesterday about the passion and the business and then uh the reality and then we'll just come back again this is in line with what the audience wants the reality check of is are you infatuated by the music or you, do you really have what it takes? So I'll just begin now with the, with the issue of the struggle of getting a support team. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm, uh, you, you'll have people who tell you, first of all, the, the biggest thing that you'll always hear and the biggest comment that you'll always get is, you have an amazing voice, you play so well, your your songs are amazing but now the challenge that now the reality is how are people how are you going to put out your music because you want to put out your music online you you want to you want to build your fan base but the problem now comes in that i mean you don't have the technical know-how of how to guarantee that you're you're doing well and your music is out there so the first thing that you need, of course, is you being the talent. Do you have what it takes in terms of, are you, are you the talent? Are you, are you the person who people, do you have a product? Because I, I want us to look at it as a product. The only way that you're going to get a team that is going to support whatever you're selling is, I mean, I mean they have to feel that your product is something that can be sold. So you have the talent, then now you have to have the first person that uh, I, I will always call uh, that you need in your team is someone who gives you the truth as it is. Uh, I know in life you have people who will always speak about the negative side of everything that you do. But make sure you have one of these people or at least there are certain people who always see the negative side of what you're doing. It's important that you, you listen to these comments. And as a musician and as someone who's putting out something for public consumption, if you're not ready to listen to the negative opinions about your product, then you're not ready for this industry. So I think that, that, that would be very important for you to, to discover early enough. Do you, are you able to take criticism? So one of the, people you need, uh, it might be one person, it might be a group of people. Uh, yesterday I made a comment about, uh, go, go give a song to your watchman, go give a song to your, to your caretaker, go give a song to just like a shamba boy somewhere, then get the opinion of that person. That person is giving you the real idea of your audience, he's giving you what your audience is going to to how your audience is going to respond to your music. So it will be very important for you to listen to, to how they are saying it. So in your, in your collection of people, I would call these people the people who are vetting your music in a, in a non-professional way, in a layman's kind of language. They're the ones who tell you, ah, yo ngoma, kuna vile igongi. Kuna vile ngoma igongi. Kuna vile siski your emotion, not someone who's going to tell you, ah, you went off over there, no. You need someone who just tells you that song, there's something about that song that I just don't feel. 
And sometimes this will just come out as a comment. You'll play a song or even how people are going to react to a song. You'll, you'll just play the song, just get a place where people are seated or even play it with your phone and then just put it on loudspeaker. And then if you're not going to, if you don't have the confidence to ask the question, at least just let it play. And then pretend that you're not really looking, but in a way, I know one of my friends, Nameless is one who does this. He plays a song. He doesn't say that it's his song. He just plays it and then Chinia uh, Maji, because him, he wears dark, dark, uh, dark shades most of the time. So he looks around. He's just looking at the, at the response. Is someone nodding their head? Is someone grooving to the beat? Is someone sort of, you can easily be able to tell if someone is feeling a song. That's the most honest opinion. And your mother is not going to do this. Your mother is going to tell you you're doing so well. Your boyfriend or your girlfriend is going to tell you you're doing so well. Your brother or your sister, most of the time are going to give you, uh, going to be a yes people. You don't need these people in your team. You need the person who's going to vet your music has to be someone who really doesn't, 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 doesn't really care about your feelings. Or if they care about your feelings, they care feelings about your feelings enough to tell you that, okay, that song, you don't have what it takes. Is it possible for you to, to do it in a different way? So in your team, that's the, the, the people who are going to critique your music and critique it in an honest way, all right? So the second people that you're going to need in your, in your team, now here is now when you're going to, to, to now publicize your music, you're going, to need, you're going to need someone who, social media, it's something that of course now with your generation and our generation today, we feel that we can see the importance of social media. So now who's going to handle your, your Facebook, your Instagram, your TikTok, your LinkedIn, your YouTube. And then now just observe all those platforms that I've mentioned. Uh, I don't know who knows the demographics in terms of the age groups that appeal to a group like Facebook. Facebook will be talking about age, we'll be talking about, about the age of 25 and above. Those are the guys who are on Facebook. Sasa, that's yani ukondo waze wako. But now you'll be, you'll be hitting on, on Facebook. So if you put out, uh, you'll notice even right now, if you, if you go to Facebook and look for a group like uh, the council, the council are these gangeton artists. If you search them on Facebook, most likely they don't even have an account on Facebook. And then, and even if they have an account on Facebook, if you compare the numbers that they have on Facebook in terms of followers and the numbers that they have on Instagram, there's a very big disparity. You'll notice that they have more followers on Instagram. So remember that Facebook you're pushing your music or your brand on Facebook if you're targeting people above 25 and above. So you're asking yourself the question, does your music appeal to people who are 25 and above? If it doesn't appeal to that group, then that might not be the best place to push the music. So your energies, your energies will have to be focused on a, on a demographic that you feel. I want to focus on this age group. But remember, the guys who are above 25 are the guys who are, most of them are in steady jobs. They have some kind of steady income. So these are the people who are going to attend concerts and pay to attend a concert. These are the people, if you're selling an album, they're going to buy an album. These are the people, if you're selling merchandise, they're going to be able to buy merchandise. But how are you going to convince this age group that 25 and above, guys, I'm putting out this kind of music. You guys can come for my concert. You guys can buy my music. They will need more convincing. But they are more receptive to something that is good. So 
now you'll have to decide how am I putting out my music? And then you'll find out you, something again that you'll notice that many people who are on Facebook rarely go to YouTube. Okay? So now the, the challenge that many artists are having is that they want to put out a video, but they only want to post the video on, on YouTube because they're arguing that YouTube is on that pace. But before, one thing that I'll, I'll just tell you that before YouTube starts paying you for your, for your music, it will take a very long time. My argument is that you are trying to build, you're trying to build a fan base. So why don't you put your music on all platforms first? If you're going to get uh, 1,025 and above year olds, that's good. You're guaranteed that on Facebook, I have this number of fans. That's perfect. So remember that Facebook, 25 and above. Now, Instagram is where now we are talking about the Kawaida Kenyan young person. So we are talking about, yes, you'll find a, a, a number of 25 and above, but majority of people who are spending their time on, on, on Instagram are the 25 year olds. Those are the guys who are consuming content that is on, on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So 25 kwenda chini. So between around uh, 16 there and 25, that's where now you're going to find if your music is appealing to that kind of audience or if you want to target that audience, you have to work your energies on, on Instagram at that point. So 16 to 25 Instagram. Now there's a new thing called TikTok where you have to make dance videos, you have to make comical, yani it's sort of like you're acting sometimes, you're just making fun with videos and dances. This might not work for every artist. I don't recommend that every artist puts out uh, a TikTok video, because again, TikTok now is for, we're talking about 18 year olds, and if you find someone who's much, much older on TikTok, most probably that's a content creator. That's someone who's trying to build content and sort of gain funds, but the, I'm talking about, you are targeting people who are consuming. You're not targeting the creators, you're ta targeting consumers. And the consumers, majority of them are kids. We are talking about 18, 20 kwendachini. So you'll find children on TikTok. So are you able to put out content that is going to excite these young people, these small kids? So now, Let's go back again. Now you, you have, and then now there's one, uh, one thing that artists never use. I also struggle using it, but it is very, very important. LinkedIn, okay? So LinkedIn is a platform for, you know, people are mainly posting their job positions, your professional expertise. That's very important. It's important for you to have a LinkedIn page where you're going to open a page and talk about what, what is your profession? A profession doesn't have to be something, uh, a profession, you know, people think that a profession is something that you have to have studied for. It doesn't have to be that. A profession is what do you do so well that you know can be able to be beneficial. It's something that you can give as a service to someone or you can create a product that people can buy, that people can consume. So, LinkedIn is a very serious platform where people are more professional in, the, in how they engage. So your posts, if you're going to post something on LinkedIn, you can still post a video, but you're going to talk about the, the professional process of you coming up with whatever product you've done. So that, that is going to be a, an important aspect of you pushing your brand. So on LinkedIn, you have your profile. You say that you're a professional songwriter immediately it's going to pair you up with people who are looking for songwriters or other songwriters. So it will be important for you to have such, such a page. So don't despise any, any platform that you feel, I can get even 10, 10 people who can uh, be attracted by my music or whatever product I'm selling. It's important that you create, but don't now post the wrong things on the wrong platform so that now you always maintain a certain kind of or, 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 or workflow.
That's how. And then, of course, now there's the YouTube that everyone loves. Everyone is fighting to build subscribers. There's nothing wrong with that. But it is also important that you, you, you form and you own the content as early as possible. So YouTube, uh, what is happening now is that it will be important for you to, to name your, your channel early enough and then be very strategic. What are you posting? Because the reason why people, more and more people will be subscribing to your channel is because they feel this person posts this kind of content. So we're going to subscribe because we identify with this kind of content. The reason why, for example, my choir's uh, YouTube channel, Red Fourth Chorus, got many subscribers at the beginning is because they felt on this channel, we can listen to inspirational music, gospel music that has been done in a choral format. So people who liked that style of music would subscribe to that channel because they feel whenever they post something like this, this is the kind of, uh, of content that will be will be watching. Now we go back to the question that I believe Joyce Edwin asked yesterday about, you know, mixing genres of music. You would have to be now careful if you're looking for subscribers, because now these subscribers, most of them are doing it subconsciously. Someone is just looking for gospel music and inspirational music. If they find that in your channel, there'll be a confusion, you're still doing gangeton and at the same time, you're doing gospel music, it will be very hard for someone to commit because they don't know what is going to pop up on their screen. Because now, in terms of your audience, you have to remember that you have purists. Now, purists are people who are listening to one style of, of music. So I, I'm talking about maybe it's a reggae purist. That one feels, ah, this artist records reggae and they do it very well. So I'm going to subscribe to this channel because if I want reggae, I can always find it on this channel. And again, the same happens for all the other styles, styles of music. So it will be very important for you to be very strategic in how you put things out. And then it doesn't hurt, even though you're putting, going to mix genres, just find a way of labeling them so that people can easily choose that if it's reggae, this is what you're going to subscribe to. If it's this channel, this is what we're going to subscribe to. So I've named just some of those basic uh, platforms that you can put your music. That's in terms of just, because that's where the content is. That's where the content is. But now there's, now again, in all these platforms, there's the opportunity of sponsorship, of sponsoring your, your post. People look at it, you might feel that uh, it's not the right thing to do, but if you have the money, your, your, your agenda is to build your farm base. So if you have the money, why don't you pay a little extra so that you guarantee that your music is going to be felt to, to reach a wider audience? Because your problem is that you, you're, not, you're not already a famous artist, you're, you're still building a brand. So you want to make sure that, you know, you've built your audience and more and more people are getting uh, acquainted with your music. So you'll notice that some songs, some of the songs that you do might not do too well, but you still have a feeling that this song, if it gets to the right platform, it will, it will flourish. So it doesn't hurt to decide, okay, I'm going to spend 1000 to sponsor this, this video or this audio for a week. So it charges you maybe 200 per week, uh, per day. And in the end, you'll notice that your viewership rises. And with that, you'll notice that more people are following you and following your music. It will be important to also decide. It's a, it's a, it's a decision that you're making because it's an investment. It's the same way you will invest in school fees. It's the same way you'll invest in paying for your children's school fees and paying for, for buying food. It's an investment that you have to make to build, to build your product. So don't hesitate if you feel that you have the money don't hesitate to sponsor a song that you've released and you're feeling maybe it's not uh, gaining that, uh, that, uh, that attention that you, you, that you feel it requires. It doesn't hurt to pay. But now you have to be strategic. You decide, okay, this is a gospel song. Have I done it in Swahili? Okay, in Kenya, people already know me. It doesn't hurt because the good thing with social media, it gives you access to the, to the whole 
to the whole world. If you've done a gospel song in Swahili, it doesn't hurt to sponsor that song. Then in the territory that you select, decide to sponsor it in Tanzania. You'll be getting more followers from Tanzania. It doesn't hurt. And when one person follows you from Tanzania, you'll notice that slowly and slowly, you are more people, because you, this person has followed you, more and more people are now getting acquainted with your music. So it will be very important for you to be strategic in terms of deciding, okay, where, on what platforms do I, do I push my music? So that is as far as social media. If you feel that you can't be able to do it on your own, get someone who, again, if you have the budget to pay this person, someone whose work is going to be consistently to push your music on social media platforms, okay? At this stage in your careers, maybe you don't have that much resources, it's possible to do it on your own, okay? It doesn't hurt to pay for it, it doesn't hurt, even though it's just 200 bob, if you can get 10 likes or 10 followers today, you're better than where you were yesterday. And that's the whole ag agenda of, of being uh, trying to build your fan base. Always make sure that it's growing because for, for, for you musicians, and uh, I in quotes, serious musicians, the more fan base you have, the more market you have. When now you have a product that you want to sell, you can be guaranteed that about 100 people are going to show up for your concert. So I, I believe that would be important to get someone to do this. Again, if you still uh, if you feel you don't have the, the resources, get someone who you can convince to, to, pay, to pay for this, to, to do this for you even though it's for free. So that will be, will be very important. Another factor that, another area of, of building a team that you'll need is now your image. Your imaging. People are still struggling with how their appearance. It would be important that you always appear, always appear the part. Some styles of music, for example, maybe if you are maybe if you are doing a, if you're doing maybe reggae or something, maybe it might not be very important that you dress in a suit, which will be a bit awkward. Cindy. But now we all know when you when you talk about reggae, you know the colors that we're talking about. Are you getting? You know the kind of dress code that you're talking about. I see some some sort of brownish things with those colors, the reggae colors, how you're going to do your hair, the kind of poses that you're going to do in your video. You're not going to sit next to a piano and then pose <laughs> the way I'm posing. You're not going to sit next to a piano if you're doing reggae. Very Meta, seems Meta, very. I need very, a giddy on like, boots and a khaki like suit. You know, yeah, you know, such things. Khaki, you're talking about what? What is going to make you look the part? If you're someone who's doing R and B and slow gospel worship music, of course you know, manze. You have to have a blazer if you're a dude. You always have to appear that manze. You're clean shaven, everything, because that is what sells. Because your 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 core audience. A young mothers, are you getting? People who are very disciplined, people who want just very calm in music. But if the look is something different, then you're going to appeal to, to the wrong people. Are you getting? And then you'll notice that people don't trust you because music is about, I do I trust this person? Do I trust this person? Do I trust this person to deliver for me? And then I come back to again that story for the lifestyle. Are you getting? I come back to that issue of the lifestyle. Are you selling a lifestyle? When I listen to you, I'm imagining, okay, that's Eve singing, that's Eve singing, that's Eve singing. And then I, I see your image when I'm listening to your music. I can imagine how in studio you are belting out that note. Those things are very, very important. Because when I take you in, when I take you in, when I'm listening to your music, I have let you in into the deepest parts of my heart. So I'm going to cry with your music. If I'm writing a love song, I'm going to write a love song based on the lyrics that you've written. So your image is also very important because I'll feel, imagine if it was this person who was saying, saying this. Imagine it was Fila who was saying this. You position yourself that you are the Fila or you are that person. So it will be very, very important for you to be strategic in how do you portray yourself in terms of image? 
Sasa, from even the selfies that you're going to post, these days you've noticed that selfies are not really now the in thing. These days it's professional shoots, or even if you do a selfie, you have to do the color correction and so many things. So now things are changing. So if you're the normal regular musician, these are things that Zinaku, because you'll be feeling, ah, these things are wasting my time, but they are very, very important, okay? So these are very, very important things that if you know you don't have the, the forte to, to do this thing, get someone who's going to assist you on a personal friendship level, or again, if you have the resources, reach an agreement where you're going to, to, pay, to, to pay for this. So, so, so image is very important and image I'm, image I'm talking about wardrobe, I'm talking about uh, the kind of pictures that you're going to be putting out, all that contributes to the, to the image, even as, as simple as the logo of your name. The way you write your name on a poster says a lot about what kind of, or what you represent as an artist. You're not going to put those rock things those rock funny funny signs if you're you're trying to put out a, a gospel album or a gospel uh, brand. So be very strategic in every single thing that you post. Image again, I'm still talking about even on your social media. If it's on Twitter, when you decide to make a comment, are you the kind of person who's going to be divisive in your comments? You also re you also respond, if you scare Nani has said or something, you comment about another tribe again now, because you remember, you remember, you, you are a star, you're someone who people look up to across many divides. So what you're going to say is going to be very critical because people create, uh, uh, draw conclusions about what you've said. So you be careful. So you'll notice that even as an artist image, I'm talking about even you have to be tolerant with so many things, are you getting? That's why you'll see actual artists really take time to comment on political things, un unless it's universal political positions that they have to make, but you'll have to be very strategic in what you say, because again, you're annoying people or you're either now building a movement that is going to contribute to society. So that is important. So now, after, after imaging and getting someone to do that, all these are people that you need in your team. And then you will need someone who now, this one you can actually even do on your own, but you need someone now who positions you in terms of, someone who positions you in terms of what are you giving back to society? That is a thing that, very many artists are not ready to do. How are you giving back? What avenues are you using to give back? You don't have to be a teacher, but what kind of mentorship are you giving to the next generation of artists? And trust me guys, that's the easiest way to build longevity in this industry, all right? It's the easiest way to build longevity in this industry by you always pushing, by you always pushing and giving back. If you hear of an upcoming talent, you're giving them a platform to share the stage with you. Wherever that person goes, that person will remember who you are and that person will always sing your praises. And then look at it this way, even if you look at it from a business perspective, if you give someone a platform, Aren't you also winning back? Are you, aren't you also winning their, their fan base? Because you're, you're also uh, gaining from the, from, the, from the fans that they have. When you share a platform with them, if you do a collaboration with them, if you work on, if you feel someone is talented and you have the platform to record for them, why don't you record for them? Because their growth eventually becomes your growth. So you will need people who you can work with who are going to help you identify partnerships that are critical for your growth? Who's going to identify another artist who you can work with so that now your fan base also builds up? So that will be an important factor and an important component of your team. So now again, now you something else that you'll need now is 
now when it comes to the stage, of course, now you're talking about the technical backing. When now you're ready to perform, who is your guitarist? Who is your pianist? Who is going to be your producer? Very important. Who are your, who's your technical backup? And these are people who, away from the job, away from you paying them, are these people you can count on. Are you getting? Build a relationship such that even when you haven't paid them or even, yani it's something that they believe in your, in your vision. Because I don't know if many of you have experienced this, but sometimes you pay for a product. You'll go to a studio, you pay someone, but still you can tell this, whoever this person is, whoever the producer is, they're not motivated to push your project. Okay? So that is something that will be happening, but you need to be able to sell your vision to the people, to the person who's playing for you guitar, to the person who's playing for you piano, so that they're your team and they have your back and they can be able to tell you, ah, here you've sung like this, but this chord will work best if you, if you sing, if you change your singing like this. Because those musicians, the session musicians and the band guys are able to identify such things. So it will be very important for you to build this section of, the, of your team. So people who can back you up on stage and also back you up in the recording process. Finally, now in terms of a team, it will be very important for you to, to just have someone that now you can talk to. Someone that you can talk to about your fears. Someone that you can talk to about your weaknesses. Someone that you can talk to about the challenges that you're having, the disappointments. Someone who you can openly tell that, hey, you go my mekata. Someone you can openly tell that my concert backfired without feeling that you are, you know, exposed or something. Someone who you can truly open up to. Now here is where maybe family can come in. Just someone who gives you that listening ear. It's important to talk to someone because as an artist, my friends, you, you guys will get depressed. That's, that's, it comes with a job. Yani feeling like, hey, is it really worth it? You feel like it's not working out. It's too challenging. So this, this is- It's part of the just, job description. Yeah, yeah, it's part of the job description as an artist. <laughs> so sometimes you That's feel true. it just doesn't work and you're not cutting it. It's not getting the response that you expected. Who are you going to be able to tell this? You will need a very strong personality and a very confident personality for you to be able to just accept on your own and say, okay, okay, here is work. So let me move on to the next one. But as human beings, we need that person that we can talk to. So that, that, will, be, that will be an important uh, factor and an important component of your team. So make sure that you, you find that person that you can be able to, to tell all the, all, all the problems that you have, all the things that you're facing, even the good times, that will be important. And I believe that will help you sort of now form that, that complete team. So now let me jump now to, again, your passion and the business. This one, I think we, we talked about it a lot. It will be very important from early on, guys, to make that decision. Am I doing this for passion? Or am I doing this? And where does my passion end? So that the business can begin. Now, if you are, if you are wealthy and you've made enough money from wherever you are, it might work out. You can be able to just do music for the fun of it. And it's okay to do music for the fun of it. Music is one of the best forms of therapy. Don't, don't shy away from, from calling music a hobby. If it's a hobby, it's okay. If it's something that you are, you are treating as for therapy to make you maybe you feel that you've had a very stressful and depressing life and you feel that music makes you feel alive, it's very, very okay to call music something that you're doing for therapy purposes. And then now, if you've decided that you want to make music something that you make money from, 
guys, it has to make sense. You can't be spending 15,000 on a song. On the first song, it's okay, because you're building the brand. You can't justify why you're doing a whole album before you even know who wants to buy it. Okay? Use as it a because you're going to spend more than you're going to spend upwards of eighty thousand recording a whole album. Who told you they want to listen to your music? Are you getting? Who told you that is what we need right now? Yeah, you know, just make sure you've done your research. And research is not about putting out questionnaires. You na pelekiwato. It's about just putting kidogo kidogo things out there. Go sing at a church event. Go sing at something small. And then identify. And then identify what, uh, and then identify what, uh, do people feel this? Would these people pay to come to my concert? If, if you can't answer that question, and if you're not sure that people are able to, to buy your album, if, if you've done, if you if you haven't even sold one single, this is a skizer tune. Then what makes you think someone will want to have your album? So don't waste money. Don't waste money on doing an album before you know that you have an audience. So so, build an audience first. So so, build your audience first, and then once you've built your audience. Then, you, then you're able to identify, okay, my audience is willing to spend this amount of money on my album. My audience is willing to come to my, to my concert. Then you, you're able to do that. So, so. And then now it always has to make sense. And then you should not, you should not hurt others in the name of following your passion. Your, your family should not be, particularly if you're one of the breadwinners, and I'm seeing mainly, many of the people that we have here, uh, and, and I'm seeing many of the people that we have here are ladies, so, and I've since, uh, Joyce, you have a small ka, ka kid over there. It might not be yours, I don't know, but um, my argument is people should not suffer in the name of what you una chase dream yako. Okay, you, you suffer alone, but don't hurt other people in the name of what everything has to stop so that you can make it. Okay, it's a, it's a very touchy topic, but please, particularly if you have a family that you're raising, it, it doesn't have, unless you, you have proved beyond doubt that there's a multi-million dollar deal that is waiting for you in the new year. So the remaining months ni sawa. Unless you can prove that beyond doubt. But if you can't prove that beyond doubt, please don't, don't, uh, don't hurt other people in the name of pushing your fashion, your, your passion. So, so it's very, very important that take your time, do your time, achieve, uh, you sort of like, you set goals. You set goals, do, do, at the, after this stage, what do I do next? And you see, you'll remember that uh, uh, I usually argue, parents usually tell us that uh, you, most of you guys when you're growing up and it happened to me, my parents used to tell me, um, yes, we have agreed for you to do music, that's fine. But you have to get a degree first so that now you can you can you can continue their music soma kwanza maliza shule kwanza and do something else well they were they were they were arguing that that argument was from a very sort of they really didn't understand the true picture but there was a lot of truth there was a lot of truth in what they were saying do something else they were just telling you do something that you know something that is going to guarantee that you have a comfortable life first then once you're, you, you have a comfortable life and you can be able to finance this thing, because you see, guys, music is not, music is not, particularly music in Kenya, it's not like accounting. 
it's not defined that if you pass your exams, you're going to get a good job. You see, if you do your CPAs, chances are, okay, in Kenya, lazima ujuane na watu wapa na pale, but kuna kajobu tapata siku moja because you have qualified. Music, you can get a degree in music, you can get a master's in music. But if you can't perform, if you can't make people feel something, and there's nowhere, you're not, you're not going to make money. But you see, if you have a doctorate in music, before you make money, even though you have a doctorate in music, because the best you can do if you have a doctorate in music is become a lecturer. There are not enough, there are not enough music schools that are going to employ a doctor in music. But if you're a doctor of medicine, you've studied for the same time. In fact, a doctor of music studies for longer than a doctor of medicine, but a doctor, a doctor of medicine is going to, to make Get make a more job money. before. Yeah, you see? So what our parents were saying, they had some truth in saying that this industry is not defined. It's an industry that is also run by moods. What does it say? Leo tuna film to anatusiana kwa ngoma zake. Leo tuna feel mtu anaongea tabia mbaya kwa mangoma zake. Look at uh, the council, look at our to your uh, uh, this this kids this, this gangeton kids. Oh, mlambeza. Wa mlambeza. Look at how they are big. They are making money. Uh, they are driving Mercedes Benzes. It's from the music them. It's from music and performances they are making because they'll quote 800,000 per show. And the, some of them, I don't even think I've cleared fourth form. Some of them, maybe they cleared fourth form two years ago, but they're making the money. It might not be long-term, but that's how music is. They have made their money. So the question of how they invest their money, that's up to them. But they've made the money. They are the hottest thing right now. So that's how music is. It doesn't, we, I know so many of my friends who have masters and doctorates in music but they are not thriving. The only thing they're doing, teaching is good. You make money, good money, it's, it's, it's steady. But imagine as performers, it becomes very hard for you to earn a living simply because you are a teacher, you are a something, you qualified in what. There are so many other things that come into play. So that's where now the, the issue of passion, because guys, the truth is musicians are poor people. Musicians are poor. You see, Very true. how many poor doctors do you know? They might not be rich, but how many poor doctors do you know? How many poor accountants do you know? Are you getting? But musicians, majority are poor. Are you getting? Guys, me, I have taught so many people I have done music for a very long time, but it's not easy. If I'm deciding to buy a car, yani, I save like no one's business. <laughs> the process you have to go to before what I'm going to yes. are you getting? Are you getting? There are so many deals. The money me I have made, yes, it's as a result of the music, Kapanapale. It all dates back to the music that I made. But it's from platforms like judging at a show here. I can sing here in South Africa, up on Dopali. I've made most of my money. Unfortunately, I haven't made money from my singing. Saudi Soul haven't made most of their money from their music. They've made their money from endorsements. The big deal they had with uh, NIC Bank. Are you getting that one? They did with Absa. They did with. Those are the things that give them money. So music, guys, music is just a medium. And even we were talking about the shows yesterday, the TV shows. The TV show will just be, they're just using you as the musicians as, okay, they're using the music to push, to push our agenda. Kani pesa unatafuta manze wa chana na mziki. If it's money you're doing this for, Stop. Because if, if, 
yeah, yeah. Because I'm telling you, it's so depressing. It's painful. It's tough. That's why I argue. If you have a passion for music, continue with your passion for music. But eh, tafuta kitu kuunda pesa. Tafuta kitu kuunda pesa. So that is the truth. The truth is that, and musicians will forever be poor. Let me tell you. Art, artists will forever be poor. That's how, that's how the world is. That's how the world is. Yes, you'll hear music in everything, but it's not all musicians that their music is used in movies. It's not all musicians that their music is used for campaign. It's just the truth. But if you want to be in that bracket of people who have made money and are making money from the music and as a result of music, imagine how hard, much harder you have to work. Are you getting? I'm sure many, many times you guys have you guys have commented and said, hey, who you may make it to just because she's good looking. I'm sure you guys have commented like that on many artists. But it's the truth. There are so many things that because you're a, you're a, you're a figure, you're a, you know, there are so many things. It's like politics. Just relate music to politics. The reason why we have a popular a uh, politician is because maybe who's, who was his father, you know? How, what kind of matusis does the person give when they're talking? How does he whip up the emotions of, a, of an audience? Are you getting? So you can be famous, but you're not making the moolah. So many other factors uh, decide what is going to make you stand out. So have the passion but beyond reasonable doubt, tell us how we are going to finance that passion to turn into a business. And that's why I've spoken about having the team, having the team that are going to help you put out yourself in the best possible way. Me, I, before I just, before I admit that nimelemewa kufanya kitu, uh, it takes a lot of time. Guana. Before eh. I admit, I'll say me, I can be able to play this piano myself. I'll say that I'm the one who can play, be able to play this guitar. So me, you can do shoot, that, you do that, and, and then I can edit. You know, <laughs> you know, you can shoot, you can edit, and then in the end, you put out your product, and then eh, unashindo kwa ni hit. It's because you did everything on your own, and you're not a professional in anything. Are you getting? So you have to be sure, what favors can you call to do the best video? What favor can you call to do the best audio? Unless you're telling me that you can do everything on your own. If you can guarantee that you can do all that on your own, go for it. But please remember, the less people are involved in the project, the less it has samba. Because less people, you know, the more people are involved in it, the more they'll feel, hey, let's support this thing. I, I played the guitar on that. I sang the BGVs on that. Because you feel you are involved. But if you did it alone, no one will want to support you in most cases. I'm talking about Kenyans. Are you getting? So, guys, it's a reality. I, didn't, I don't want to, 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 uh, to depress you, but it's the truth. Now, on my final, on any, the reality check. Again, it still touches on, on your passion and the business. So it's a reality check I'm, I'm asking. Guys, do you really have what it takes? Do you really have what it takes? I asked the question again yesterday. And deep down, you know. I know some of us might not, uh, you, you might not be able to, to believe in yourself. Sometimes you're really gifted, but you don't believe in yourself. But it's important to ask your question, do I have what it takes to flourish? To flourish as a teacher, to flourish as a singer, to flourish as an instrumentalist, do I have what it takes? Are you getting? It would be very, very important for you to always keep asking yourself that question. And then another thing that people now do, you can sing. But now you want to sing styles of music that are not like you. Review yourself. And that's what I'm talking about. Have people who are going to tell you the truth. Guys, 
me, I'm, I'm not afraid of people looking at me, but just look at me and then tell me, would I do well singing rap music? Doing rap or doing gangeton? You just even look at my age, you look at my demeanor, lakini mimi nimejiambia, mimi nitafanya gangeton. Are you getting? So I'll be knocking on that door, it will never ever open. Allah, yes. It will never ever will open, never no matter how talented I am. Mm. Sometimes, and you just need people who are going to tell you, hey boss, manze mina filmini mkali, lakini nyi mnaonayani, where can I tell my story the best way possible? Because the truth is that you have a story to tell, but you have to decide how do I tell it in the best way possible? And that's why I, do, I usually don't believe that if you're at uh, there's anything like me, I only do gospel. I'm a mere, no, if you decide to do gospel, I respect that. But it's possible to do gospel. It's possible to do even a love song that people who are very pro gospel will feel, hey, that person is telling, uh, talking about love the way I would want love to be talked about. Are you getting? That person is talking about the pain of raising a child the way I would want, the joys of raising a child, everything. That person is talking about life the way I would want to be told about. Are you getting? The Gengeton guys, people argue they are vulgar, but they are speaking to someone. And unfortunately, that's, those are the masses. So how can you be able to tell your story to the people who need their story to be told? Because you see, our outlook on life is different. There's someone who sees a Mercedes and a Sema, that's the ideal car. There's someone who sees a, a normal Toyota, whatever car, if it, even though it's a, a Vit, and I said, that's the ideal car, because that's what, that's how we are in life. We are different. The same way, we also need our stories to be told on diff in different ways. There's someone who their stories are being told in the gangeton format, in the hip hop format. There are people who their stories are being told in, in this other style. It is important that you discover who I, whose story are you going to tell and in what way. And then how do you make them feel something by telling it in your own way, based on your real experiences and the challenges that you've had? It will be very, very important for you to discover. And it's, it's, it just requires for you to think hard. What are the things that have defined you? What are the struggles that you've gone through? And then as a result of that, who will I appeal to? Who will I appeal to when I tell people? Sometimes you might just be as good as just speaking. Speaking is also music. It's called elocution. There's nothing wrong with, with speaking. I had a, a Kayang guy who wanted to come and rap, and I told him, boss, always he rap. It will be felt. And the moment the guy started speaking in his own way, in his own accent of the hood, just speaking, and then you put a musical bed on it. It's a song. So now you, whatever challenges you've gone through, tell us about those ones. You will never ever go wrong. Your expectations and the joys even of what you've gone through and the successes you've gone through, you will never ever go, go wrong by telling people the truth. By all means, if, true, if your truth and if your joy is, is drinking and you have a nice way of saying it, go for it. Me, my argument is, always have the honesty. That honesty is very, very important in whatever you put out. And then guys, if you're doing it 100% from your heart, you will get the right people to support it financially. Okay? You will get the right people to support it financially, but do the math. Do the math. Have you ever made 100,000 through your music today? What makes you think you're going to make a million next week? Impossible. Impossible. It's just, it's just making sense. You know, it, it has to make sense. In music, it's just, it has to make sense. There's a track record that you'll see. Hey, I've been doing well. I haven't made money like any people are feeling me. 
people are feeling me and people are want to find out where I'm from. People want to find out how, I, what's the process of writing my music. It's very, very important, okay? But make yourself available on every platform. Kawaze, how do you, how do you, how do you package yourself for, for the older generation? For the kids, you have to do something that is going to appeal to the kids. You can't, you can't, you can't do something for Aze and you expect the five-year-olds and the ten-year-olds are still going to, 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 to like what you're doing. You have to package it for the specific demographic that you're doing. The Facebook generation have the money; they are working. Most of them have jobos, so they have the purchasing power. If your music is geared towards children, don't feel that it's bad because children, sell it to the children. Let the children love it. A child will always tell the parent what they want. So you, if you create something for the kids, the child will mention it to the parent. The parent will go to Facebook to search for you because So make sure that you have your product on Facebook for the parents to find you, because the parent don't find you on Instagram, they don't have an Instagram mini. Then TikTok also, have it on TikTok for the sm very small kid to talk about it, show it to the parent or show it to the big brother on Instagram. And then eventually, so you can see the importance of having all these things on all these platforms. And then now on LinkedIn, when now people want to see this is a serious business person, eh, you have a page on, on LinkedIn that you're able to, to do all that stuff. Sawa sawa. Sante ni sana watu wa Mungu. I am done. <laughs> Bila, eh, hey, what I niambia watu, Bila comes and he speaks the truth and sometimes, in fact most times ask him he will tell you not very many people appreciate the kind of truths that he has to offer. But one of the reasons why Bila is who he is today is because he's known to be just a kind of person. Me I'll give you my honesty. You go decide what you want to do with it. Me, Bora, ni And the other thing that Fila actually does is he's living proof of what he says. So it's entirely up to you. And like we said, ask yourself those questions. Sit yourself down and ask yourself, do I really want to do this? You know, do I really, is this really what I, I want to do? And is this really what I'm gearing up for? Uh, Fila, there are some questions here I want to read. Um, let me see if I can get. The first question was from Sarah Jay, and she was asking, uh, is it necessary to register your music with organizations like Ngoma or Muziki? And is it, and if it's not, how do you opt out if already registered? Um, very quickly, I'll just tell you, don't, don't, uh, uh, don't hesitate to register music because guys, and that's the beauty, these days you can sell one song and make money from it. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you what worked for me. Right now, uh, MCSK has been banned, so MCSK can't collect royalties for anyone. And even if they're given back their capability to do that, before the systems are set up for you to make money from your music, it will take quite a while. The best way is to use these platforms that distribute the music for you. So we are talking about the likes of TuneCo, so you you just uh, if if you don't know about TuneCore, just write it T Tune and then Core, Tune C O R E. They'll break down for you how you can uh, how you can uh, sell your music. So when you put your music on TuneCore, something like TuneCore, there's one also called Afrikori, and that's what the one that working uh, Saudi Soul Nyashinsky use. But TuneCore is easiest. Uh, so if you put your music on TuneCore. Uh, you just pay a yearly premium, tune core, tune and then C O R E. It's one word. Uh, so if you put your music on tune core, they're going to make it available on iTunes, they're going to make it available on Spotify, on all platforms that you can think about. So that would be a good place. And you'll pay something like for, for one song, you'll pay about. Uh, you pay about uh, you pay about ten dollars. That's maybe about a k something. So it doesn't hurt, and that's for a year. So for a whole year, people can find your music on Amazon. They can find it anywhere, and I I, I feel it's the best way. And then the good thing with TuneCore is that 
when you are registering your music, there's something called an uh, ISRC. It's a number to signify that that music belongs to you. The good thing when you register on TuneCore, you immediately get that number. So your music, wherever your music is ever going to be played anywhere in the world, if it makes it to uh, a TV station in the Netherlands or the States or whatever, you will notice that it gives you a breakdown that your music has been played. You even earn music from when it's just played. So you notice ah, you've made $0.01 from here. It looks like nothing, but imagine if your song goes viral, you'll make so much money. If someone uses your song on, on a YouTube video, it tells you that this person has used your song on a YouTube video and the money comes back to you. So, and I'm sure MCSK doesn't have that capability. So I would suggest that going with this international uh, platforms Platform. would be the best idea. And then once right. the Kenyan Copyright Board and the MCSK sort uh, their house, it doesn't hurt to do that. But right now, MCSK, things are not very good and even camp and prisk. So it might not be a good idea to register there until they sort everything out. Yeah. So the second part is that she asked is now, so because for Kenya, maybe it's not a good idea right now. Yeah. Uh, what's the best option to opt out? How do I opt out? That's what the second uh, don't, part of don't the Don't opt out. Don't opt out because uh, don't opt out. That 2,400 that they might send you one day is not bad. That's all. Yeah. Work in a, in a calligraph. Then they have money, so they don't need that money. <laughs> that 2,500 might come yeah. on a bad day. Because oh, right now what they're me. doing, they do a blanket. Right now they give a blank. Uh, sorry. Right. They give right now they give a blanket figure to all their anyone who has uh, listed on Register. their on their on their yeah. on, 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 registered with them. But in future they'll now have the machinery to to clearly verify how many plays you've gotten and where music has been used. And I, uh, so don't, don't leave that, but I still insist that the best platforms are the tune calls, Africores, all those places, because even international labels, when they are looking for music and, and they want African music, it's easy for them to find it on places like iTunes. So your mod awesome. is going to be discovered there. Yeah. Right. Um, Sarah J again is asking, how do you know or identify what your audience wants? I mean, it's, it's easy. That's why I said, put out your music, put out your music on all the platforms that I mentioned. Uh, make yourself available. If you're an upcoming artist, you have to be performing as much as possible. You have to be sharing your music on people's inboxes as much as possible. Do it in a good way so they don't feel that to na sumbua. And then you'll notice people will easily give you feedback and you'll notice, hey, you went to Mandikai. That's a very good question. When someone doubts if it's you who has written, that shows that that song is, is, is sounding good. Uh, you'll notice someone is saying, hey, I like the piano part. Someone is telling you, piano ni poor. Someone is telling you the sound is sounding nice. Someone is telling you the production is good, but uh, the production is good, but the voice kidogo. And then someone Content. is telling you, yeah, someone will say, yeah, you have a very beautiful voice. Someone is just mm. saying, you have a very beautiful voice. That's what they're saying. They're not saying that they love the song. They're saying you have a beautiful voice. So learn to accept this feedback and you note them down. Sometimes someone right. will be, hey, you're on to something. You're going far. All that is feedback that you need to, to take. Yeah. Okay. So David is asking, and, and again, I feel you've answered this so many times. Uh, so for that, maybe you don't just mm -hmm. elaborate Kidogo too. How do you turn passion in, uh, into business? How do you turn passion into business? Yes, uh, just, uh, just to recap on that, it's something that you love. That's why you're calling it a passion. It's something that gives you so much joy. It's something that you feel most alive doing. That's why you're calling it a passion. Now, the same way you're feeling about it, make others feel that about whatever you're doing. Okay, the same way you get so much joy. When we're listening to you, are we going to feel the same joy? Are we going to empathize if it's a singing a song about sadness? Are we also going to feel that sadness? If not, then you're not reaching to us. It's something that you're just doing for your own self but make sure that we can also be able to share. The moment we want what you're doing and we want to listen to what you're doing, then it has become a business. 
then we want to consume it. The moment you discover that we want to consume it, now you begin charging us for it. If you're still a new, if you are, if you are still a new artist, charge us uh, kidogo. Until now, you know that we really, really are hooked onto it. Now you begin quoting the real figures. Sindio. <laughs> exactly. Carol Gift is saying she's. She, it's a comment. She's saying um, when I was recording my first album, I sold my TV <laughs> and used the money for recording, but producer Alikula <laughs> Yeah. Bad move, yeah, bad move, yeah. Bad don't, move, don't, yeah. don't go to an album. It's like saying, uh, just it's your product because it's a product. It's like saying you want to sell to us blue band or margarine, and we have so many competitors. What is going to make you as stand out? Make sure you right. you answer those questions. And then until you're certain that we want it, don't sell it. Don't sell it. Don't, Don't sell, sell it. it until you are certain and we then, want what you are The best selling. way to do is start by giving us free samples, you know? Yeah. And free samples, you don't spend all your money on free samples. No. Give us free samples. Mm. Once we know that, hey, now you reduce on the free samples and then you start saying, oh, by the way, if you want more of this, you can go here and support me. And then, guys, it doesn't hurt. It's something that we haven't covered. It doesn't hurt to tell people to support you. It doesn't hurt to tell people, Niaje, uh, please contribute towards my, my recording. People who really feel you, Tastuke, hey, Mtu Ametuma 1,000, or Tastuke, Mtu Ametuma 2,000. Actually, like best. you said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, that's also a way of building audience. Wale Watatengisha, right. you know, those are the people that are, yeah, Kumbe, if I, it's actually also one of the ways of seeing if I mm -hmm. release my music, who would listen to it and you yes. know, what would be the, 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 mm -hmm. the yeah. genre that they'd listen True. to most. Yeah. Anyway, you may go catch up. You were saying something. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying, just make sure that it's something. It doesn't hurt to the best, the best musicians in the world, uh, particularly in classical music. They, they, they call out for sponsors. So they say that I'm working on my next album. There's a famous one called Christopher Tin. He did the famous Babayetu song. He usually yeah, yeah. announces. Yeah. He announces that I'm working on an album that is going to come out in September. So he calls for sponsors. So you pledge, people pledge, people pledge. In a month, him usually has sold out uh, concert tickets and then people have already financed his project. So those are things that you, you want to consider. It doesn't hurt to ask for help. Right. Mm -hmm. Aya, Christina Diambo from South Sudan is asking, how can one get an already established artist to feature in their song? Is it one way to increase a fan base? Is it free or, or at a fee? So question number one, how do I get a known artist to feature in uh, one of my songs or one of my videos? Yes. Uh, yes. So the one. best way, of course, is to reach out to them. Reach out to them uh, on, their, on their Facebook. Uh, text them on, on email them. Some will respond, some will not respond. No is also an answer. Never ever be afraid of being told no. Uh, so someone uh, just text them. And then now if it's very established artists, they're going to say that for them to do a collaboration, they charge. Right. Th that's one of the answers that they'll give you. They charge, they say, okay, I charge this for to do a collaboration. Some of them, they'll tell you, send me the song that you want us to do together. If they feel that song is very good, they'll say, okay, yes, we can do the song, but this is the offer. They'll say that we can do the song, but the song will come out as me featuring you. That is mm -hmm. also an answer. So you decide, mm -hmm. am I willing to do that? The other one will say that uh, you'll still pay me, but not a lot of money, but I'll still own copyright. Right. Are you willing to give out your copyright? So there are two ways. The song can do very well and you'll make create a fan base or the song can do badly and you spent a lot of money. So it's a decision you, you have to make. So. Right. Mm. Aya, you, Aya, someone here, uh, David Mongi is saying, well, what's the best way to pitch out content you are putting out to the people who can buy, who can buy it or promote it to the next step? What's the best way to pitch out content you are putting out? Yes, uh, uh, 
I'd be honest, uh, the, well, there's no best way because you, you just want to give put your music on every platform available so that you just get the response and also people who can, can support. So it would be important for you to just make your music available, whether you do it as a snippet, a small piece, and then you tell them if you want more, find it here or contact me. One of the things that uh, I did uh, at first, it doesn't hurt to even inbox people the song. You get, it doesn't hurt to identify Manzemi, I want these people to have my song. Send them the complete song. If that person has that phone, that song on their phone, they are going to listen to that song with someone else. Are you getting, so you're building a fan base. You want to give your music to every, every single platform out there. So don't, 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 don't hesitate to, to share your music as, as far as possible. All right. All right. Yep. Um, finally, the last question, I know the second last question is um, from David as well. He's asking, oh, uh, Princess Yurei is asking, uh, how do you register to copyright? Uh, for copyright, that's the other process. Yes. Just uh, if, you, if you do, if you go to TuneCo and the likes, the moment you've registered at TuneCo and the song, they'll ask you all the questions. If the song is yours, you have to name the person who wrote the song. You have to mention what year it was written. You have to mention uh, the area where it was written and created. So once you've done that on platforms like TuneCo, the music is already a copyright. So no one can unless now you lied about the information, but no one can, can take the music from you. Okay. Uh, now the, there's, the, there was another question here. Uh, okay, how do you vet what price range to sell your content if it reaches that level so that, so that you don't under or overcharge yes, yourself? Yes. That's David Monkey <laughs> again. Yes, yes. Again, I, I always uh, advise that look at what other upcoming artists are selling their music, look at what other established artists are selling their music for. There's always a, a cap. Most, uh, most songs go for about $8. Uh, some, some just go for, not $8. Albums are the ones that go for about uh, $10. So a single will go for about 0.99, about $1. A song would go for about $1. The very established artists sell theirs for about four dollars. So you see, you make more money from singles than putting out our whole album. Because Saudi Soul sell theirs for about some songs are going for two, two dollars, some are going for four dollars. So they are making quite a lot of money. So it's all about just look at what other people are selling. Then based on the excitement that your song has generated, you you quote like that. But on platforms like TuneCore, they already, they already have uh, a cap. So it's them who decide how much they're selling your music for. So they can also make their cut. So if they notice that your song is doing very well, that's when now they add maybe a, a kafiga on top. All right? Okay. Uh, just to finish and read mm -hmm. the last one, the last question is, uh, Judge Fila, how does YouTube pay? That's from Garo Gift. Yes, yes. Well, according to my understanding, YouTube uh, begins paying after about after about a thousand views. Um, uh, I would need to confirm that, but it takes quite a long time before you see any. It does. It takes a lot, and, a lot of time. Yeah, it takes a very, very long time. So that's why I argue that don't just post your music on YouTube. If you're an upcoming artist, uh, post it also on Facebook. It doesn't hurt. Your problem, you want to build an audience. So post your whole song on Facebook and also on YouTube. Once now you have over 100,000 subscribers, then there you're guaranteed that your music is doing very well and many people are going to listen to it. That's when now you, you can just exclusively put it on, on YouTube. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm glad that every one of you has been answered. For those of you who haven't been answered, of course, uh, Fila did give out his number and you can yeah. be able to reach out to him and ask him you know, the questions that you want to ask him. Uh, but um, maybe to just give an example, even as we conclude, there's a day I reached out to Bam Ziggy. I don't know you guys, most of you guys don't know who Bam Ziggy is, but I yeah, reached I out to Bam Ziggy one time. Yeah. 
Yeah, Fila and Amjua. So I was reaching mm -hmm. out to Bamzigi because one of my students is a hip hop artist and I wanted to see if they can do a collaboration. I kid you not, it wasn't even Bamzigi. The management of Bamzigi, he's managed by, by, by a group called Diamond in, in Nigeria. They charged me a whooping $20,000. And I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, like Christina Nastuka. <laughs> $20 just to do a collaboration. And by the way, like Fila has said, in that collaboration, they are the ones who are deciding. So it's going to be, it's going to yeah. be Bamzigi featuring Rodrigo Entertainment. Now, yes, yes. the song is, is mine. Yes. <laughs> We just want to do a remix. The song is already done. We just want to do yeah. a remix. Yeah? yeah. Mm -hmm. So like Judge Fila has said, some things, some things, it's all about, are they worth it? Yes. Is it worth the time? Is it worth the effort? And by the way, you don't necessarily have to lean on someone for you to be something. Yeah? So usually, Mimi Wanasema, what I usually say is, Build yourself up, they'll meet you halfway going, right? Build yourself yeah. up, they'll meet you halfway going. And that has a lot to do with how are you networking yourself? There's something that I usually say to my students, never allow yourself to be the smartest person in the room. Never allow yourself to be the smartest person in the room. That's how you start building networks. That's how you start building connect connections. That's how you start learning. If you guys didn't have this session with Bila, there are, you know, you wouldn't know about Tunko, or if you did, then there's some knowledge about what is given because some of it is from experience that you'd never know. So yeah, learn to be the kind of person who just learns from everybody and every situation and betters themselves out of all of that. Yeah? All right, so thank you so much to everyone who has attended this session. Fazlan uh, Astuka. <laughs> Nilikuwa na itishwa 20 million, ni 2 million, yes. Nilikuwa na itishwa 2 million, usijani. Yeah. Uh, all right. So with that being said, thank you so much for those of you who joined. Uh, we're hoping to see you next time in class. This is somewhat the last class that Fila uh, is offering, at least for now. But na joja tutu tamsumbua siku ingina tutambuk maali. It's tamtaputa tu. All right. Uh, let me see. I know Christine has... Christine, you have something to say to Judge Fila before he goes. Yeah, sawa. I'm hanging in the internet. Sema, tunakuwa na sasa. I'm hanging. Sawa. Thank you so much, Judge Fila. Thank you to okay. all of you. Thank you, precious. To anane next time. Uh, it's good. It's been good. It's been good. To anane. Yes, and let's do more sessions, please. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. We will do yeah. more sessions. In fact, we will do more sessions next Friday, Gioni, like this one. All right, nice. We will inform you. Oh, by the okay, way, guys. before you leave, tell us yeah. your review of, tell us your review of um, Rea's song. Did you hear it? Ah, beautiful, beautiful. Both songs. You sent me two songs, right? Yes. Yes, yes. She's amazing. I, I'd love to talk to her. Amazing. I will, <laughs> I will make that happen. Okay. I love uh, yeah. Joyce. I mean, to me, I could not have a to me, Mangoma Jana. To me, any Mangoma venues, or please, they're amazing. Let's let's do things. I'll I'll share them, and then trust me, trust me. And then there's nothing like, don't hesitate to release a song, put it out. Palio metoka zinginez na kam. That's all. Amen. Yeah. Don't that's hesitate. True. Let's keep starting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so to many wimbo, get inspired, get moving. David, to my wimbo, bana, to my wimbo, Joyce, it's good that you send that song. Unona na kumbuka. Yeah. Sawa, thank you so much, Fila. Let's organize for more. Yeah. Princess Nani also sent me a song, Jana. Yeah. Okay, guys. Bye bye. Oh.